All right, guys, welcome to the Combat Athlete Physio YouTube channel where we take human movement science and we bring it to the combat sports. If any of you watched UFC 318, the main event, Holloway versus Poirier, was the third time they fought, definitely did not disappoint. And in honor of this third Clash of the Titans, I wanted to go over some of the biomechanical principles that we saw on display during this fight. First, we'll start with Max Holloway, and then we'll finish with Dustin Poirier. All right, so the first strike we're gonna look at from, from Holloway is this straight white that knocks Poirier down. Okay, so very good biomechanical principles at play that I want to make sure that we highlight here. And we're going to start when he starts to shift his center, after this left hook, when he starts to shift his center of mass from the right leg to the left leg. Because as soon as that left leg plants, he immediately starts to kind of rotate at the hip. And that rotation is called hip internal rotation right there. So you can see that as he plants, that center of mass moves forward towards his front leg plants his leg, making it a closed chain movement since the foot is planted on the ground. We've talked about that before. And then he rotates into the hip. Okay, so that's internal rotation at the hip. And if any of these biomechanical terms are confusing or you want to understand them better, I'm going to post a link in my community post because I created a, a foundational biomechanics course specifically related to the combat sports. And what it does is it kind of breaks down joint by joint all the motions. It talks about planes of motion, axis of rotation. A lot of these terms will be better understood when you follow along and you can come back and watch these and see what I'm talking about. Okay, but if you already understand them, just continue to follow along. But that's something that I've gotten questions about and I wanted to create for you guys. So go and flag that. Anyway, let's move over to the right side. So with the right leg, we've got the hip internal rotation at the left leg. But at the right leg, he's pushing off of the ground and straightening both of his ankle, his knee, can't really see the ankle, but he's straightening his ankle, his knee, and his hip. And this is a movement, a kind of a global movement in the lower extremity called triple extension. And so what's happening is muscles like the gastroc and the soleus of the calf are pushing off of the ground in a movement called plantar flexion. The quads are extending or straightening the knee in a movement called knee extension. And then obviously the hip is also extending for muscles like the glute max and the hamstrings. So we've got, just to kind of recap the lower extremity before we move into the trunk, we've got that center of mass shifting forward to the front leg, hip internal rotation, and along with that really good kind of force production from the ground all the way through the trunk with a motion called triple extension from the ankle, the hip, and the knee. So as we move to the trunk, we can see that the trunk moves relatively uniformly here. We see that a fair amount, when I say uniformly, I mean the hips and the shoulders, um, they're not moving exactly together, right? So we have some movement happening independently at the trunk, but we don't see that really big whipping hip-shoulder separation that we've seen uh, with, with fighters like Julian Jackson, uh, or we've, we broke down Ryan Garcia's left hook. We see this really big whipping effect here in the trunk. Uh, and you do see a lot of really good trunk movement we're gonna, couple, we're gonna talk about here in a second but we don't see that really big separation, particularly in the transverse plane. All right, so at the trunk, I want you to notice that when Max comes and leans his body forward, he's performing this, this we call it a triplanar movement, meaning that it's not only happening along mainly one plane or two planes, it's happening along all three planes. So what we're getting at the trunk here, because he has set up his hips so well with his lower extremity movement, is trunk flexion as he kind of reaches forward there. So he's flexing his trunk forward, so it brings his shoulders forward relative to his hips. He's side bending, so he is crunching down to the left side so he can reach with his right arm. And he's also rotating to the left. So this is a, a triplanar movement. We've got flexion in the sagittal plane, we've got side bending in the frontal plane, and then we've got rotation to the left in the transverse plane. And again, all of those biomechanical terms will be highlighted in that foundational course. So go and watch that and make sure you understand what we're talking about. And now let's move up to the striking arm. So we're gonna talk about the shoulder girdle, the shoulder complex. What happens here is that after this really good trunk movement, muscles like the pec major and the anterior delt start to perform a movement called horizontal adduction at the shoulder. And this is essentially just bringing your arm around kind of like a hook. But what's happening here is he's actually using a little bit more tricep to extend the elbow or straighten the elbow than you would if you did like, let's say he was doing a right hook where he had more of a, a, a big rounding motion to this, why it's called a straight right. So muscles like the pec major, the anterior delt, and the triceps are performing or assisting in performing the, the straight right with a, again, with a movement called horizontal 
adduction. And so now after contact, when we look at this really good follow through, and you can even see his lat here because he's so lean, but what you don't see is this scapula flaring out. And the reason it's not flaring out is because he has a lot of good, what we call scapular stability. Those muscles around the scapula are doing a good job of helping him deliver his arm or the extremity through the punch. And the main muscle that's doing this, keeping that shoulder blade flat to the ground is a muscle called the serratus anterior. And it's, it protracts the scapula or scapular abduction if we're gonna be a little bit more anatomically accurate. All this tied together just shows how Max Holloway has, has developed his skill in the environment of fighting to be really efficient uh, and, and has become one of the best fighters, in my opinion, ever. All right, the second strike from Holloway is gonna be this uppercut, okay, that catches Poirier and knocks him down again. Uh, but the main thing I wanna talk about, we talked at nauseum about the lower extremity. I mentioned the shoulder hip separation in the last one, how when it comes to rear arm strikes, we don't really see it that often. This is, this is a really good example, because so this is an uppercut. It's a really good example of how this trunk movement and the hip shoulder separation can, can help deliver the arm or deliver strikes with more force. Uh, and, and we'll talk about that here. So when he switches his legs, you can see that his hips stay relatively forward, right? So his, the UFC sign on his, on his shorts are gonna stay facing towards Poria here. And so, particularly right here. So if you were to draw a line between the two hip bones of Max Holloway, it would kind of be going straight through this way. And if you look at the line of his shoulders, it would be separated, particularly in that transverse plane. If we were to take an aerial view, the line through his shoulders and the line through his hips uh, would not be parallel. They would be kind of crossing one another. And so what this is doing is taking advantage of something called the stretch reflex, okay, or the stretch shorten cycle. And so when muscles like the external oblique and the pec major and the anterior delt and even the bicep here because it's an uppercut are lengthening, so as they length, so his, his elbow is going from a position of flexion to extension, which means the bicep is being put on stretch. Okay, the external oblique does rotation away from the side of the body that it's located on. So he's gonna rotate his trunk to the right. So we know that if the external oblique rotates his body to the right, then the left external oblique is put on stretch. And then we know that if he's performing a muscle, or if he's performing a movement like shoulder flexion, like he's gonna do here, that it requires activity from muscles like the pec major and the anterior delt, similar to the straight right or horizontal adduction that we talked about earlier. So all those muscles are put on a really quick stretch and that quick eccentric elongation allows for a more forceful concentric contraction. So whenever the muscles lengthen before they shorten, that shortening contraction becomes a lot more powerful. And then he lands right on the button, knocks Poirier down again. Okay, so one more time, we've got that hip separation. Hips are facing Poirier, shoulders are not facing Poirier, so they're kind of facing the same direction as Poirier's shoulders are. So he's get that really big stretch, put on the muscles of the torso, and the shoulder girdle, like the external oblique, pec major, anterior delt, and even in the extremity like the bicep. And then once they elongate, they contract really quickly for a more forceful contraction, showing us a really good view of the stretch reflex and how Max was able to kind of use that in that situation. Okay, I don't think we'd be doing Poirier justice if we didn't watch him jump the ghillie at least once here, okay? So he jumps the ghillie, he's got the arm in guillotine, and he kind of rolls over on top of Max, loses the arm there, and then this gives us a pretty good idea of what would happen if he were to kind of throw his hooks in and hip into him. The guillotine kind of relies on that lateral border of the radius, blocking that right, that left carotid artery, excuse me, and then if he were to get under his chin a little bit, because Max is doing a good job defending this, the ladder, maybe even like the, some of the oblique muscles on the side, and if it was really deep, maybe even some of the, the bony structures like the iliac crest of the hip, if he were to hip into him. But Max is doing a good job of not letting get his hooks, um, and he gets out of it, gets to the side. But what I really want to show is this aerial view here whenever, whenever Poirier hits Max with this really nice right elbow. Okay, so again, we see when we, when we shift our attention to the lower extremity, we see this triple extension. Maybe not so much for the foot, but we do see extension at the knee and the hip since his knee is the one that's planted on the ground here. So we see again from the quads, the hamstrings, and the glutes respectively, we see that knee and hip extension. 
So after he extends to sort of wind up for this strike, we see a lot of the same principles that we saw with Max in that straight right. So he side bends to the left. We can see that nice side bending motion here to the left. We see him flex his trunk or he kind of throws his body forward. So he brings his, his shoulders forward relative to his hips with muscles like the rectus abdominis that help to bring the trunk forward. Uh, and then he rotates to the left okay, with muscles like the internal and external oblique. And if we travel up to the shoulder girdle, we can see how well developed he is. We've got the middle and the upper trap on really full display here. Nice spinal erectors showing as well. And then whenever he does that horizontal adduction we talked about, he's striking with the elbow. Okay, so the elbow is going to be in the flex position, which means that he has to follow through even better. And we see that that shoulder blade stays flat, uh, which tells us that that serratus anterior is doing a really good job of following through. Uh, and making sure that, that we've got some good scapular stability whenever you make contact uh, with your opponent. So overall, just a really good fight. I know Max got the decision. I think he deserved it. Uh, but just these biomechanical principles are something that I think we should watch for. And I think it's important to say here as we kind of wrap this up, I'm not really talking about what should or should not happen or whether it was the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do or what's more effective or what's not. We're just looking at the movement and we're analyzing it. Okay, so this is not intended to be any sort of coaching moment. This is intended to kind of help you learn and understand the body better so that you can take that and hopefully use that and express those capabilities in your sport, in your particular sport. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time.